If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In part A of the question, we are being asked to calculate the linear charge density along an arc. And in order to do that, we need to look at the definition of a linear charge density. Now, the textbook actually discusses three different types of charge densities. We have the linear charge density, surface charge density, and then volume charge density. And they use different Greek letters to represent them and different units. But they never really explain how to determine the linear charge density or the other two. So for linear charge density, what we can basically say is that the value of that linear charge density, symbolized by this letter lambda, is equal to the total amount of charge divided by a length of some kind. And each problem will have a different type of length. So for example, in this case, we have a circular arc with a certain radius, and it subtends this angle of 40 degrees. So it might look something like this. We'd have this circular arc, and that angle is 40 degrees. Now the charge is only present along the arc here. So we have negative 300 times E amount of charge that's sort of spread evenly across this circular arc right here. And in order to determine the linear charge density, we need to figure out the length of that circular arc. Now we know perhaps from a pre-calculus course that an arc length, or S, is equal to the radius multiplied by that central angle. We just have to make sure that the central angle is measured in radians. And of course they gave it to us in degrees. So why don't we actually come over here on the side and convert 40 degrees into radians. We know that there are pi radians in 180 degrees. So if we multiply the numerators here, we're going to end up with 40 pi over 180. And then we can reduce that to 4 pi over 18. And in fact, that reduces further to 2 pi over 9. So this would be the correct value to use for theta. And then the radius is given to us in centimeters. We're going to want to convert that into meters. So why don't we come over here and plug in for the length the expression r theta. And we'll take the 4 centimeters. We'll multiply it by 10 to the minus 2 so that it becomes meters. And then we will multiply by that angle of 2 pi over 9 radians. The amount of charge is given directly. It's negative 300e. So that means we'll have negative 300 multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. And if you look carefully, you can see that the units are going to be coulombs in the numerator divided by meters, which is exactly what we expect for a linear charge density. Let's pick up our calculators and type this in. And when we do that, we get roughly negative 1.72 times 10 to the minus 15. And as stated, the unit of this linear charge density will be coulombs per meter. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now part B asks us for a surface charge density. We can see from this table in green here that a surface charge density is symbolized by the Greek letter sigma. And in this case, we're going to be dividing an amount of charge, not by a length, but by an area. And we know it has to be an area from the unit here. The unit is meters squared, which is the unit of area. In this case, the area is relatively easy. It's a circular disk. So all we need is the area of a circle, which of course is pi times radius squared. So we'll take the amount of charge, which was once again negative 300 times e, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. And then we'll divide that by pi times the radius of this circular disk squared. The radius is in centimeters, so make sure you multiply that by 10 to the minus 2 in order to convert it into meters, and then also don't forget to square it. And when you work that out, you should get approximately negative 3.82 times 10 to the minus 14. And if you look here, the unit is coulombs divided by meters squared. So this will be the correct answer to part B. Now part C is very similar, but this time it is a sphere whose surface charge density we are asked to calculate. The same concept of charge divided by area certainly applies, but this time we have to use the surface area of a sphere rather than the area of a circle. And the surface area of a sphere is actually 4 times pi r squared. So with that minor adjustment, we can plug in the known values. And in this case, we end up with roughly negative 9.55 times 10 to the minus 15 coulombs per meter squared. So this will be the correct answer to part C. Finally, on to part D, which now places this charge 
uniformly spread through a volume of a sphere. And it's asking us to calculate the volume charge density. And so for volume charge density, we have the Greek letter rho. And to calculate that, we take the amount of charge and then simply divide by the volume that that charge occupies. Now, the volume of a sphere would be 4 thirds multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius cubed. So one more time, we'll plug in the charge of negative 300E. And then on the bottom, we have 4 thirds pi. The radius is once again 2 centimeters, so we'll have 2 times 10 to the minus 2 meters, and then we cube that value. And when we work that out, we get roughly negative 1.43 times 10 to the minus 12. And this time the unit will be coulombs per meter cubed. And notice the meter is being cubed in this case. And so this will be the correct answer to part D. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address that is shown on the screen. And I'll do my best to post the solution to it on YouTube.